this is Robert L. Smith, and we're deposing Wilton Dungan regarding the events of his dad in World War I in the trenches in France uh, in the hope for a, uh, a view or consideration for uh, the Medal of Honor over and above uh, the call of duty. So, uh, Wilton, your dad uh, started in uh, the trenches in France as a cook. Yes, he entered as a cook and been at there in a war zone or a zone of fighting. They didn't have time to set up any kind of facility for him to be a cook, so he decided he had to join in and he had to pick up a weapon off the battlefield and keep going. And, and of course, in different times, they were wounded and they had to get back for aid and his lieutenant, whether he asked him or how it ended up, but he ended up many times taking wounded comrades back for uh, help. And one particular time he had a one that was supposedly wounded and and they started to cross and kind of like bees where the wounded one thought it was bees and my dad told him no, that that's the Germans are just trying to take us out. But he had enough of that and was able to get loose from my father and took off running and <laughs> never got seen again. So that's just one story and I'm sure that he had many others that he carried back, but that was one that really kind of got to him, thinking he was <laughs> wounded that bad, but still was able to take off. And <laughs> later, uh, coming up out of the trenches, what they call going over the top, his lieutenant was killed at that time, and the lieutenant had told him that with all the help that he had been doing, that he would try to get him uh, a little above him, just a sergeant. But then later, as they were moving forward, and I'm sure that there was maybe different ones on different sides and all lower that trying to push the German father back, that. Uh, he jumped down in a trench where the Germans were at and turned their own machine gun on them. And of course, I'm sure he knew enough German at that time to, to tell them to surrender, which uh, they did. And come to find out there was, I believe they said, 171 of them in that trench. And then he had to hold that position until help could come, which he did also. And then uh, there was other times that I think they caused him to, uh, once he got back, to, which they did not have what they have nowadays, psychiatrists and all the help, but uh, he could have time sleeping at night because of times that he would have to find places to try to rest to sleep at night and wake up in the, or get up in the morning to see all the dead bodies still around him. That was a bad experience, and then, of course, towards the end, uh, he was wounded with a shell that landed on a, his comrade next to him, and, and part of that shell wounded him through the helmet he had on, and it was a wound to the head, and he went, of course, that ended his uh, tour of duty at that particular time. I believe that uh, there are other stories that was like being held up at the, trying to get through a village and and then not being able to stop and enjoy any of the food or uh, drink that the Germans had left behind because they were warned that they could be poisoned. So, and I also think they had a run in with mustard gas at that some of that time too, which supposedly was a pretty bad experience if he got caught up in what he had. So that's about all the stories I can think of are some of the things that he told me, which was very hard to get him to talk about the war. Until you gave him the two beers. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, thank you. Um, once again, this is in the, uh, uh, just a realization and exploration for the possibility actually for a Medal of Honor. Um, we have the uh, 
uh, silver star that we're um, also showing, as well as the citation from General Pershing. And then there was a uh, citation or a, uh, a cross sword uh, medal from France. How did yeah. that come French about? French Croix de Guerre. Yeah, when he was given the French uh, the medal from the, uh, the general that was in charge of all the French, he kissed him on the cheek, which was very something my father had not expected. But they, and but he knew that it seemed like that the French really appreciated uh, the, what he had. And that and was that an was individual a, citation or a unit citation. What the according to the and well, I was told that it was always just given to, uh, uh, not to a single person or a soldier, but on his citation, his name is the only one on it, so I'm not sure just how that all comes about. Okay.